The Nivala or Nivala is one of the best selling and most technical suits in the Rucker range. It uses a multitude of top spec materials in its construction, but that also means it has a top spec price. So is it really worth the investment? Let's find out. I've been wearing the Nivala 2 suit for almost a year now and I wanted to do that because I wanted to be able to formulate a very thorough review. This jacket and trousers cost a lot of money, therefore they needed to be tested properly over an extended period of time through varying different weather and riding conditions. So let's hit the nail on the head and dive right in there with the pricing. The jacket's recommended retail price in the UK is £1,399.99 and the trousers are £1,049.99. So that's an eye-watering £2,449.98 for the complete suit. That is a very big investment to make. It's obviously going to be out of the budget for a lot of riders, but there are people who can and will spend that money on the suit providing it performs of course but if you ride big mileage and ride all year round and need something that's going to work for any kind of weather conditions then it probably does make a bit more sense so what makes this suit the price that it is and more importantly does it do what rucker says it does I'll start by briefly running through the specs and materials. I won't spend too long on this, as you can check all of this out online and there's a link in the description for you to do so. And there's also plenty of content on YouTube with retailers standing next to the suit and going through in fine detail. I actually want to concentrate more on its real world performance having ridden in this jacket and pant combination quite extensively. Now, the main reason behind the cost of this jacket is the materials that it's made from. Look at any jacket that uses the exact same materials and it's roughly the same cost. We can have a long discussion on whether these materials are better than cheaper alternatives, but maybe we'll save that for another video. The main material for the construction of this jacket is a Gore-Tex Pro three layer stretch laminate. Gore-Tex do stand out in terms of quality and performance, not only because of the fabrics, but also in the way that they allow them to be used. All brands that use Gore-Tex have to be certified and use specific construction methods. This way, Gore-Tex can ensure the products perform at the highest level possible. This is obviously at a cost to that manufacturer. As well as the three layer laminate, armor core material is used on vital contact points to offer a very high level of abrasion resistance. Armor isn't scrimped on either. Full level two D3O XTR air protectors are included, covering shoulders, elbows, back and chest in the jacket and knee and hip in the trousers. But it's not normal off-the-shelf D3R armor. It is made specifically for Rucker and subsequently covers a larger surface area. As an example, this is a standard D3O Viper back protector. This is the back protector that comes in the Nivala 2. This is a standard T5 Evo elbow protector. This is the elbow protector that comes in the Nivala 2. And for one of the biggest contrasts, this is a T5 Evo shoulder armor piece. This is the equivalent that goes into this jacket. It covers a much bigger surface area, far more protection. And when you consider it's got all of that, plus a chest protector in here, which is CE certified, that's a lot of protection. And don't forget with this jacket, you also get this really nice downfield thermal liner jacket and trousers to match. It's just a separate liner that you wear underneath. So obviously you can use this as a destination jacket. You can ride in it when you get to where you go and you can lose the outer shell and just wear this if you're going off to get some lunch or to the pub or out in the evening, whatever it may be. Okay, so let's briefly look at some of the features of the jacket and we'll start with the pockets because from my opinion, that's a pretty important part of any jacket. We do have on this jacket two hand warmer zipped pockets here. These are marked as water resistant, not waterproof and that's important. As well as those two exterior pockets, you've got a Napoleon pocket here, 
that is inside the jacket and it's inside this stall flap over the zip so that is 100% waterproof and inside it it's got different compartments as well so it's not just one big hollow pocket which everything falls into there is also a pocket on the lower back which is actually quite easy to get to I'll just demonstrate that now sometimes these map pockets have a flap on the top that you have to open and undo and they can be pretty tricky to get to whilst you're wearing the jacket this actually if you just want to shove something in the back there it's really easy there is a connection zipper of course for the trousers and there's a crotch strap underneath there as well Another important issue, of course, is venting, and you do have external vents on this jacket. You've got two on the shoulders. You've also got one under the, um, sort of on the forearm, and you've got vents on the back to be able to exhaust that air out. The one thing I've found is quite obviously with the laminate suit, that zip is a potential way that the water can get in. So although it has got a waterproof zip, when you do those up, it says, you have to make sure that that is pushed right back into the little zip garage so that it's completely closed. And not to forget, there is also a ventilation zip that runs down the side of the jacket and that actually doubles up as well. So as well as that being a vent that you can open up, if you open it from the bottom, it can give you that little bit of extra room if you need that when you're sitting down. But of course you have got a Velcro adjust the strap on the bottom there as well. Two of the most common ways that water can get into a jacket are up the sleeves and down the neck. And the Nivala 2 has two very clever ways of dealing with that. The cuffs feature a zip plus a Velcro strap for adjustment as well as a built-in Gore-Tex inner cuff. Simply tuck the inner cuff inside your glove, then zip the outer over the top and tighten with the Velcro. Done. Water then can't creep up into your sleeve, and it works. Uh, in terms of stopping the water getting in at the neck, there is already a relatively high collar, but there's a neoprene extension that sits at the top of that. It sits nice and flush to your neck, and it will sit up underneath your helmet. It does stop the water getting in. It's a neat solution. It does work. There is one slight caveat to that, and again, I'll touch on that when I talk about what this is like out on the road. Turning to the trousers, you can see they come with a standard a set of braces but if you don't want to wear those you can just take them out they're velcroed into a, a little holder on there i find those useful i know a lot of people don't like them but uh, it means you can wear the trousers a little bit looser on your waist for comfort and not have to continually keep pulling them up when you're off the bike again on this zipped pocket at the top as you would expect on any standard trousers and again marked water resistant not waterproof and then below that running down to just above the knee is a an extra air vent in there as well if you're somewhere and you don't want to walk around with the armor in you've got a zip access at the side and to give you an idea that is the knee armor from these a big long piece of knee armor goes right down to the top of the shin but still remains comfortable and that's the thing that we'll talk about in the next section and one other important thing to look at when we get to the bottom of the trouser is the opening this again has a waterproof zip and it's a gusseted bottom so it will only open to a certain width it's not one that really flaps completely open um, but it opens wide enough to get this over the top of pretty much any boot. One other thing that I noticed which is good is there is an extra sort of padded piece in the seat of the trousers. Now that gives an extra piece of comfort for long journeys, but it also means that it sort of keeps you from direct contact with the seat, which will help keep things cooler when the temperatures rise as well. As I said, I don't want to spend too much time on the technical elements of this jacket. You can all go away and look at those, and I suspect if you're watching this video, you would have seen other videos or at least looked at this online anyway. So let's get on to the important thing of how it performs. Let's start with comfort because that's a very important issue, obviously. And when I first collected this, I was kind of dreading it a little bit. I've worn Gore-Tex 3 Layer Pro outfits in the past. They've been quite stiff, they've been quite crinkly, and they've been a little bit uncomfortable initially and taken quite a bit of bedding in. This, I'm happy to say, was a completely different story. 
The Stretch Gore-Tex really makes this a suit that feels supple and flexible straight out of the wrapping. It will break in further over time, but it doesn't need an initial period to bed in. The armor, as we've seen, is big, but it doesn't hinder movement and it actually feels very cosseting. Sizing is pretty generous, I'll be honest. I'm a 46 inch chest, 36 inch waist. That normally puts me in an XL or a 56 euro size. With this jacket, I was actually able to go down to a 54 in both the jacket and the trousers to get a slightly better fit but there's still room for me to get that down jacket underneath and be comfortable and not feel bundled up. Sleeve length is good, I've had no issues with that. Uh, if you get the right chest size, the sleeve length should be good unless you've got gibbon arms. And when it comes to the trousers, you've got a choice of three lengths, short, regular or long. I'm usually with a 32 inch inside leg a regular. I plump for the regular trousers. And they were fine. As I kind of alluded to earlier, the only real issue I have as, well, it could be classed as a negative in terms of the comfort is this neck. Now that's a very personal issue because I have actually got quite a short neck and it's something I struggle with on a lot of jackets. So when this is done up, that neoprene top there fits nice and snug and it is soft, it's comfortable in that sense, but it does sit up pretty much right underneath my ears and on the base of my jawline there. Now that means that I do get a really nice kind of contact with the helmet which stops any water going in there, but it might be something to consider if you don't like that kind of close fitting neck. If that's of an issue, then it's definitely something you need to check out by trying this jacket on before you commit. In terms of performance, I'll be completely honest and say this is an incredible piece of kit. I have worn this in torrential rain at motorway speed for hours and I haven't had a single piece of water get in. When the temperatures drop, the down jacket and trousers work really, really well. I've worn this in temperatures at zero degrees centigrade and probably slightly below that and with just a long sleeve base layer on underneath the down jacket and this jacket, I've been fine. In fact, I've been more than fine. I have been comfortably warm. Very, very impressive indeed. Now it's only when the temperatures start to rise that this suit becomes a little less practical. Generally up in the 20s, mid 20s, it's fine. Once you start to get to 30 degrees C, you can have all of these vents open, but they just don't force enough air into the jacket to keep you cool. If you live in warmer climates or you're touring somewhere that is at 30 degrees plus, this is obviously not the jacket and trousers to go for. Oh, and one more thing before we move on. The warranty for this jacket in Europe is two years. In the UK, it's five years. And if you register your garment within 30 days of purchase, it gets automatically extended to six years. That's not bad at all, is it? Well, Brexit means Brexit. Now, I'm standing here. There's a very large gray animal with the trunk in the corner of this room looking at me and it's time to tackle that as well. And that is the CE rating of this jacket and trousers. The Nivala 2 suit is rated at a single A and that normally provokes a vociferous response in the comments section and possibly quite rightly with people saying if I'm spending that much money on a suit, it needs to be higher than a level A. But is that the whole story? So the story isn't necessarily as black and white as it seems. I was fortunate enough to get to speak to a pretty senior member of staff at Rucker at a recent event, and they confirmed that this uh, suit, the jacket and trousers, was only ever submitted for CE testing to a level A standard. Now, just to clarify, some people assume that manufacturers make a jacket, send it off for testing, and it will meet one of those requirements, and they'll come back and go, yep, this is good enough for single A, or it's good enough for double A or triple A. It doesn't work like that. What you do as a manufacturer is you submit the jacket for a specific rating. The stretch material in this jacket, particularly the bit that's used in the, the sides here, was going to have a problem with the Darmstadt machine, which is what's used to test the abrasion resistance. Because it's so stretchy, 
the amount of stretch it gives gives a false reading on the machine. The new Darmstadt EN17092 standard requires a higher level of abrasion resistance in zone 2 compared to the older Cambridge EN13595 standard. Now the stretch side panels on this jacket do creep into that zone. Now would you believe that the difference between achieving a single A and a double A uh, for this zone two is just half a second more of abrasion resistance. Now the question is, does this single A rating give you a true indication of the safety of this jacket? I've not crashed in this, so I can't vouch for how this would fare in an accident, but I have tried double A rated textile jackets that only have elbow and shoulder armor, so no chest, no back protector. They don't have abrasion resistant materials like armor core, and they are lighter weight than this jacket, yet they've achieved a double A rating. Now admittedly, this maybe would have achieved a double A rating or higher if Rucker had submitted it, but they decided to go in at the single A. Does that mean this is a less safe jacket? I don't think so. I'll compare this to uh, another jacket, which which I won't name because that's not fair. Um, but uh, again, double A rated jacket. It's got that safety rating. If I was going to have a crash, I would rather be wearing this one than that other jacket. And that's not because that other jacket is unsafe. It's that this one feels more robust and has lots more impact protection. So this does lead me to a more general question is that are the CE ratings more skewed towards abrasion resistance than impact resistance? Is that the right thing? Uh, is that something you should be more worried about? The argument is, well, if you fall over in this uh, and it gets ripped to shreds, that's not good. If you walk away from that uninjured with no road rash or anything like that, I would take that and I would say, this has done its job, I'm gonna get another one of those. That might not necessarily be the way that everybody looks at it, but from my point of view, I wouldn't expect to have a, a, a big slide down the road and then be able to just re-wear the suit and it does exactly what it did before I had the crash. It's a difficult scenario to look at. Uh, it's a very deep and involved scenario and that's something that would probably need to be done in a separate video. So if you fancy getting into that and having a look at those, let me know and I'll work out a way of maybe doing some uh, kind of video that looks into the, the CE ratings and what they actually mean. But there's plenty of stuff out there. John Milbank at Bike Social has done some really good stuff around this and they've got the benefit of loads of feedback from the Bike Social members, which is something that I don't have. So maybe head over to their channel and have a look at that. So I guess now I really need to answer that initial question of, is the price you pay for the Rucker Nevada too worth the investment now depending on the rider and your circumstances I would say yes if you ride all year round in all weathers and cover thousands of miles then this is a suit that you can put on and not even think about that and I can honestly say that I've yet to meet the conditions which includes hours of torrential rain where uh, this has let me down Comfort can't be ignored because that plays a very important part in terms of passive safety. If you're uncomfortable in a jacket, if something's pinching you, if you, you, know, you haven't got the freedom of movement, then that's going to affect your concentration. So all the time you're thinking about that, you're not concentrating on the road or riding the bike. So comfort plays a major part in that safety as well. So it is a lot of money, obviously, but as I mentioned again at the beginning, other brands using the same materials pretty much come out at the same kind of cost. And you could argue that there is a bit of a brand premium on these, but Rucker's reputation, I think, stands up very well. Uh, but I've only been wearing this suit for just coming up for a year. So actually, if you wear this suit or you've got other Rucker gear, I'd really be interested to see your feedback in the comments section below to let me know how you got on. I think that would be interesting for me to see and it would probably be interesting for Rucker and the UK distributor to see as well. 
So that's it really. Uh, I've tried to pack as much of this in as I can in a short space of time, but with a technical item like this, there is a lot to cover off. So if you have got any other questions, if there's stuff I've missed out, let me know in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.